Hello again, this is Michael from TOEFLresources.com and today's video is all about speaking type 6 questions. Those are the academic lecture questions. Now in today's video, as always, I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques as well as strategies that you can use to answer questions of this type. As always in the video, we are using as a practice question something taken from the official guide to the TOEFL. That is a textbook published by ETS. This particular question is from practice test 2, which is a question about child development. Now, you don't need the textbook in front of you for this video. I'm not going to give you the question here because it's owned by ETS, but again, if you don't have the textbook, don't panic. The purpose of this video is to give you universal strategies that work for every type 6 question. So no matter what the actual topic is or what the content is, the strategies will work. They're universal. So don't worry if you don't have the book in front of you. That said, it's a very good book. It's one of the better preparation books for the TOEFL and it's very, very easy to download it or to buy it. So hey, you know, why not get it? It'll help you with uh, the test. It'll help you get ready. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about the question. I begin all of these speaking video uh, lessons by explaining what the question is all about. The reason for this is that TOEFL is a standardized test. So the topic of type 6 questions will change every week, but the actual structure and format and how they're constructed, it never changes. It's always the same. So once you understand what kind of question you're going to get, you're well on your way to mastering that type of question. So here goes. You're going to listen to a short lecture on an academic subject. For type 6, there's no reading. There is just a lecture and it's on an academic subject. It's not about campus life like the other speaking question. It's about an academic subject, something that you might study as a university student. This lecture is going to explore that topic, that academic subject, using two main examples or points. So, to elaborate on that, the lecturer, of course, has a main argument that he's making about the subject, and he explores that argument using two main examples or points. It's always going to be two main examples or points, never three, never four, two, I promise. Next, you are going to be asked to answer a short question about that using the two points or examples from the lecture. Now, you're probably noticing that this is starting to look like a summary question, and that's right, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. First of all, let's focus on the structure. Again, you will be asked to answer a short question using the two points or examples from the lecture. And here is the example from the textbook. It goes like this. Using points and examples from the talk, see, explain how learning art can impact the development of a child. So in this sample question, the main point is learning art can impact the development of a child. That's his main point. And he uses two examples to illustrate that. So your job, basically, as I said, is to answer this question by summarizing the lecture you just heard. How do you do that? Well, as always, you do it 
first of all, by taking good notes. Just like every video begins with a summary of the question, every video continues by showing you how to take good notes for this question type. There's two things you want to take notes about. You want to take notes about the main point, the main argument of the lecture, and you want to take notes about the examples that he uses to begin with. In this case, I took the following note about the argument, the main point. Studying art is beneficial to the development of young children. I got that from the very beginning of the lecture. You should do the same. No matter what the topic of your lecture is, take a note from the beginning of the lecture, which summarizes the main point that he's making. Next, the examples. Let's talk about it. The first example that the lecturer uses in this particular lecture is drawing pictures. So I took a note about that. Simply talks about drawing. I'm not using full sentences here, I'm using point form. That's his first example. It's in green. Then I took notes about all of the supporting details that followed this example. I took a note about how would they express complex emotions with pictures. I took a note about how they have limited vocabulary but can express ideas through drawing. I took a note about how they might draw themselves jumping in the air to show pride in their bicycle. I took a note how they can express both negative and positive thoughts this way. These are notes about every single detail that the lecturer mentions. That's your ultimate goal. Now, TOEFL's easy for me because I'm a native speaker. I got everything. You might not get everything. That is okay. But get as many as you can. Get as many of these details as you can. And you're going to put them into your answer. Every single one of them. Okay. So next, I took a note of his second example, which is about shaping clay. And then I got all these details. I noted the detail about patience and persistence. I talked about the example of making a car from clay. I talked about the instant reminder of accomplishment. I talked about this lesson about persistence being transferred to other parts of life. Again, this is everything. And with all these three points, I took a note of every single thing he said. And unlike some of the other speaking questions, this is all going into my answer. So again, this is basically a summary question. It tests your note taking, it tests your listening, and it tests your ability to paraphrase and to use your own words and your own sentences to express what you've just heard. Now, you should know that the lecture is kind of, um, it's sequential. This is the first thing he says, right? I noted, you get this at the beginning of the lecture. And then right away, he's going to start talking about his first example. And there'll be some kind of transitional word, like first of all, which will clue you into the fact that he's talking about a first example. And then when he talks about the second example, there will be some kind of transitional word, like secondly, or simply another example is, which clues you into the fact that he's now talking about his second example. Okay. Now, we've got our notes. What do we do? How do we turn this into an answer? Well, first of all, templates. We structure our answer using templates. What is a template? Well, if you've seen my other videos, you know that a template is a organizational plan. It's a structure. And it's also universal. You can use the same template 
Every time you take the TOEFL, you might take it next week, you might take it next month, you might take it in six months. The template's going to work no matter what. This is because it's a standardized test. If you've seen my other videos, you know I love templates. So let's take a look at the template for this question. I begin by saying the lecture is about. The professor illustrates this point by using two main examples. First, he gives the example of. He says that. Secondly, he speaks about the example of, in his opinion. There you go. That's a template. You can change it if you want. You can say the professor describes this point. The professor elaborates on this point. Instead of saying first he gives the example of, first he states the example of, first he describes the example of, you can make changes like that. Make it your own. Make it something that you really love saying. But basically, the structure, the plan, does it need to be changed? It works, I promise. So let's put this into action. Let's, let's look at one of these answers that uses the template. Here it is. Oh, wow, that's really long. I didn't realize it was so long. You can pause the video to read it. But as always, I'm going to read it myself after I have a drink of water. Okay, so here goes. The lecture is about how art classes can benefit the development of young children. The professor illustrates this concept using two main examples. First, he gives the example of drawing pictures. He says that it is difficult for children to express their emotions out loud because they have limited vocabulary and that is much easier for them to express complex emotions by drawing pictures about how they feel. He mentions that, for example, a girl who is proud of riding her bike but cannot find the words to talk about it can instead draw a picture of herself jumping in the air beside the bike. It is possible, he says, for children to express both positive and negative emotions in this way. Secondly, he speaks about the example of shaping clay. In his opinion, this art form is a good way for children to learn about patience and persistence. He says that it takes many attempts to, for instance, mold a lump of clay into the shape of a car. Once accomplished, though, the physical sculpture can serve as a symbol of the power of persistence. He says that the lessons children learn from such an activity can be transferred to other areas of their lives. Finished. When I made my last video, somebody commented about my Canadian accent. Is it about how I say about? The lecture is about how art classes can benefit the development of young children. I don't know, maybe. Anyways, let's get back to the point. This shows the template. The lecture is about. The professor illustrates this concept using two main examples. First, he gives the example of fill in the blank. He says that, ooh, fill in that long blank. Secondly, he speaks about fill in the blank. In his opinion, fill in the blank. I speak very quickly because I'm a native speaker. You perhaps can't say this much in one minute. That's okay. If you have to delete something, delete some of the supporting details. For example, I could delete the last sentence of each of these and it would still be a fine answer. It would be okay, even if I deleted those two final sentences. I could even delete two here and one here and it would still be okay. But basically this is the structure. This is the template you're going to use on test day. Okay, that's about all I have to say about that. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. If you need more of this stuff, please subscribe to the channel or visit our main website at tofelresources.com. If you go there, you can find templates for all the speaking and all the writing class sections. You can find 
listening help, reading help. You can find sample essays. You can find top 10 lists. You can find uh, basically a lot of really great stuff that will help get you ready for the TOEFL. I'll leave it at that, uh, but I hope to see you again in a week or two with uh, another video. Take care then. Goodbye.